What's going on, guys? I'm here with Rudy Sanchez with Sebastian de San Jose, and I feel uh, super lucky to have the man of mystery. He doesn't usually do this. I had to uh, really bug him. I was very persistent, annoyed the crap out of him until he finally uh, agreed. And I want to introduce you guys to him. Uh, he's a multi-unit owner of Smash Gyms. They have a few locations in the Bay Area and one in San Jose uh, as well. Um, but yeah, I, I want to ask him all the things I've been wanting to uh, pick his brain. And aside from martial arts, I know he's totally stoked about it. Aside from, uh, uh, from martial arts, aside from um, business, you're so overall good dude, a very smart dude, and a marketing nerd uh, like myself. Uh, and, and we probably talked for way too much for hours before we said, okay, we got to record this because we got shit to do. Um, but what up, Rudy? Thank you. Sure. I'm grateful. Uh, Rudy's a black belt as well in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So um, don't, I can cuss this in my show. Don't fuck with that. Uh, but uh, yeah, I wanted to uh, just talk to, to Rudy, um, kind of get some insights and hopefully give some value to you guys. So uh, let's start first before we get into business. Uh, Rudy, you're telling me, so you are from, your dad went to James Lake. Yeah, my both my, my dad and mom went to James Lake. Um, uh, my dad was born in San Jose and my grandfather was actually born in San Jose. So uh, I'm third generation uh, San Jose native. What about you? Did you end up doing the Bellarmine thing? No. Nah. Hashtag Eli. Yeah, <laughs> Eli is the youngest. My brother Eli is the youngest, so um, uh, I'm 12 years older than him. So he he was able That's to awesome. do the Bellarmine thing. But the as the, the firstborn, uh, the firstborn went to Mount Pleasant. I went Sick. to Mount Pleasant. Sick. It was and then um, oh, it was uh, decent back then. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, my and, brother and sister went there as well. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. And then uh, my younger sister went to uh, uh, Mount Pleasant, and then I had another sister that went to Evergreen, and then Eli went to Bellarmine. Let's keep it real. We had an amazing talk. It was going so good by the pools, hot as shit. And then this gardener from across the way just starts blasting the horn. And I'm like, all right, we're not giving up <laughs> on this. Um, I'll try to pull from that what I, what I can. But uh, let's keep things uh, uh, flowing. So um, what I asked you earlier was, um, you know, tell me about the very first location was in Sunnyvale. And I want to know the, the, the little stuff. Um, I think it was brilliant. People don't see all that. Um, that, you know, instead of going with the 24-hour fitness, instead of going mm. with somebody else's name, mm. it's much harder to uh, become you, risk it all, and then actually franchise out for those who are we're, kind of familiar. Yeah, we're um, not actually a franchise, but yeah, um, the, we, we're the blueprint we, of that. We grew it, yeah. Yeah, you right. guys grew it. Right, right. And, but the very first one was... Sunnyvale, that's right, that's right. So we... I'm going to uh, convince them to become a franchise. <laughs> uh, uh, so we, we opened the first one in Sunnyvale in 2000. Uh, 10 and uh, late 2010 uh, I had some partners who uh, I was doing marketing with and uh, we, we were doing some marketing for some local gyms and it was going well this is a Sunnyvale uh, it, right. it was the, the marketing we were actually doing it online in uh, uh, for some gyms in Texas and, right. and um, it was it was going well and then meanwhile I was training with Michael Jen in his garage Michael had closed his school 10 years earlier because he did not like business or doing mm. the marketing and um and he was on capital a board yeah so you remember that yeah yes, yeah so crazy. so that's where i first met michael it's and he, he had closed his 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 uh, gym 10 years prior and i was training in his garage he's michael's one of the first 30 american jiu-jitsu black belts he's Savage. just really really uh, I, I thought i thought of the bjj documentary of that other guy with his garage i, I don't know his name is but obviously yeah. He loves it. Michael's a man, right? Yeah, he's a, a super talented instructor. He had focused on becoming a, professor, a professional instructor and was really, really good. And I was training with him in his garage. Meanwhile, I was doing marketing for gyms. Mm -hmm. So it was a short jump ah. to say, hey, why don't we open up a gym? And, and so I went to Michael and I said, hey, uh, uh, I'm considering opening a gym. Would you like to teach there? And he said, yeah, that'd be awesome if I don't – if all I – I have to do is mm, uh, transfer my skills to people. This is what my passion is. I, I'm happy to do it. So and you're doing the same thing. You're just combining your skills. You're actually yeah, doing what you yeah. love to do in your free time. Right, right. Um, and so uh, we opened that one. And you know, the the biggest thing you, you asked about the little things. The the the, the big thing mm -hmm. I always say is that um, we just had incredible support. And uh, it, it, it's. Uh, we, 
all these people came, all of our friends and family came to help us. I'm telling you. And, and it was just, and I know we were talking about earlier, you know, what we were talking about, and it reminds me of the talk with uh, that Onnit owners. He gave the examples. He mentioned uh, Willie Nelson. Mm. He's like the feds, the government, everybody's always calling after, but he had so much support. And he was just always such a good person to everybody he met was as soon as they took him in, 20 people were calling that didn't even know to bail him out oh, and wow. sue the shit out of him. Yeah. And he didn't do anything special. Yeah. And when he said that, uh, this is the, the honest CEO, it, it kind of stuck with me because it's like, if you have the support, if you're a good person and yeah. you've always done good, believe it or not, literally not even the government uh, can touch you, yeah. right? If you yeah, have that's true. That's, that's what, I'm sorry, Tend, that's remi- that reminded yeah. uh, me of it. And I think that's the kind of sense of community I saw when I walked into Smash San Jose. We were talking about um, all those things, uh, mm-hmm. and I'll answer the question for you. I asked them how Smash came up with their name, and I was impressed that you know he didn't just go with it with himself, but you sent it around to 10, 12. Yes, yeah, so right. Get the consensus. One of, one of my uh, uh, friends came up with the idea, and we all uh, put in like four names, and then we all voted on them, and then uh, uh, Smash won. You yep. know, and I, I, I like the idea of it immediately, and um, it uh, it caught on. So you got Sunnyvale done. First leap you took was San Jose, and uh, we had an amazing conversation, but it's okay, we're going to have a better uh, one. And when looking around, because you're originally from San Jose, you mentioned, um, shout out to Sam, that it was tough to find uh, certain spots, but uh, Sam ended up connecting you with a spot. And- yeah, uh, Coach Sam Spangler uh, from Quimby Oak. Um, I had told him that he was driving all the way from this area to Sunnyvale to train his jiu-jitsu. Coach me, Coach Eli, yeah. 10 consecutive That's right. championships. That's but, right. But continue on, I'm sorry. Sam is an uh, amazing <laughs> man. So uh, he, uh, That's the reason I met you. Yeah, that's right. So he, um, he uh, connected me with someone who found that location on Quimby and Capitol. And we were super excited to, uh, to bring something home. You know, I grew up in this area. Uh, my brother grew up in this area. Um, uh, and that's where we left off. Uh, Philip. Uh, yeah. I'm not saying his name right. I'll say Philip. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Philip. Um, I always call him Philippe. Because, because that's correct, probably. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, um, yeah so Philip, Philip. He checked it out. Phil and Mario mm-hmm. were involved in this, the Sunnyvale and helping in the Sunnyvale location as instruct- mm-hmm. instructors. Instructors. Okay. And um, and they they had uh, wanted to open up their own location. And they were definitely on the top of the list because they had just contributed so much to Sunnyvale. So I told them, hey, we found this location. You guys want to come look at it? They looked at it. They jumped in. They're amazing partners. Always and great vibes from Mario. From yeah. I, I, I do the Indian telekinesis, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> which I'm wrong yeah. sometimes. Yeah. But uh, um, Mario's uh, awesome. Uh, Incredibly sure. positive guy. Dude, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's, that's hard to find. It says something about him. So um, he's the head instructor at, at uh, Smash San Jose. Yep. So um, uh, train jiu-jitsu with Mario. He knows a lot. Just great, gives a great experience. And so him. Anybody with a basketball to jiu-jitsu background has my, uh, has my, <laughs> always has my say. And oh look, I got my, my text on. Uh, but um, mm-hmm. let me get my man crush. It's, I don't have a man crush on uh, uh, Philip, but I just constantly. Which means you have one. Which means I have one. You say that. No, but the point was, uh, <laughs> I, I've seen so many times. Uh, he would kill it in American Ninja Warrior. And watch, you're yeah. gonna get some comments on this. Say, yeah, you better. And I'm like, man, if the only thing that's stopping you is signing up. I'm gonna sign yeah. your ass up. I don't even know if I said that already in this video. It's yeah. probably twice. But, um, but yeah, Phil, but Phil we're, was we're, an amazing athlete, and uh, uh, just like he he is, I I, I call him the mutant mm-hmm. because he's just so strong, so flexible. He's a gymnast, um, yeah. yeah, yeah, and a, just a great athlete and a, a great business partner. He he had. Really took ownership of, of the day to day operations in, yep. in at Smash San Jose. I was him working on flooring, working on something. Yeah, um, that, that, that's awesome. Yeah. I heard somebody saying it was probably Rogan or somebody the best body type for for martial arts is as far as like like probably a break dancer mm. or something like right? yeah. because they're so mm. uh, or a gymnast. That sounds right. Um, yeah. and, but where we left off, just perfect. This is where we we're going into was then you told me about about uh, Jacob, first yeah. freshman. Uh, Ever to win a state title in California, he, he made uh, wrestling history, you know. So you, you imagine a, a 14-year-old freshman uh, uh, competing with insane. seniors who are 18, 19 years old. Yep. And, uh, you know, during that time of your life, there's big changes. And he was just, just uh, uh, 
he came from a, a, a legacy family in mm-hmm. wrestling, one of the greatest families ever in, in the history of uh, 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 California wrestling. Yeah, I knew something was up. All these people were coming from far just to individually like train. Yeah. And he, he, was, he, he was, was doing one-on-ones. He was the prodigy of, mm-hmm. of this family. He was the youngest. He was the prodigy. Went into the, the state tournament, won it as a freshman, as the first ever. And so when we opened the first location, I had known Jacob from the, the local wrestling community. And uh, he would drive all the way over to Sunnyvale, just like Sam Spangler, and just help there. And, uh, you know, for free to volunteer his time. And awesome. and so when we opened the second location, he did the same thing. He contributed just an incredible amount. And uh, so now he's an, an owner in Smash San Jose. I don't want to cut you off. I'll yeah. say congrats to him. You were just telling me that he just became uh, uh, an owner. So that's yeah. very, very cool. But mm-hmm. talk about the thank you economy. He doesn't even know. He followed Gary V's now. <laughs> give, give, give. And yeah. you're, you're going to get rewarded somehow. Yeah, that is, I, I've been fortunate that I think that's a philosophy that almost all of uh, uh, the, the Smash yeah. partners. Community. Uh, Huge sense of community. Yeah, yeah. And, and Jacob was a great example of that. Phil and Mario as well. Well, if anybody's listening, even if it's not even a great, uh, uh, you know, the typical corner franchise location, whatever, uh, you know that you knocked it out of the park when that type of thing doesn't matter. Just from word of mouth, mm-hmm. just from people knowing that this is a spot you can be. If you can be down the, the, the street in an alley under a basement, but everybody wants to go there. Right. Um, there's something great about it. The people, the community, and you're going to win no matter what town you go in, That's- in, in my opinion. And so that, that's awesome you. that, that you guys. Go. But and then how do you keep um, that going? But then again, I think that talent, that like, attracts more people. Right? Yeah, I, I, I think it attracts people with a similar philosophy. Right. So what, what we saw is, um, and if they don't have it, you can. Yeah, yeah if they don't, they're not gonna last. The, yeah, they don't fit the culture. Right. They don't fit the culture. So, um, and that that went down to our instructors and to, the, to our members. And so I think we just have this really, really close a community that uh, i think the people in the community will do anything to help each other it's a crazy thing with martial arts because even if you're like that from just an athlete martial arts perspective mm-hmm. you're not going to last anyways mm-hmm. so the way that mm-hmm. meshes with business and the partners mm-hmm. too that if they have that same type loser mentality mm-hmm. then they're not going to be good at what yeah. they did their background yeah. Yeah. and then they're going to get weeded out yeah. anyways yeah. right so yeah. working with uh, martial artists i'm sure you already have that part taken care mm-hmm. of right mm-hmm. that they have great work ethic um and, and a whole bunch of, of discipline, but um, you keep. Uh, I've already talked about you. You went to Mount Pleasant. What did you go to college? Uh, uh, before, uh, just uh, Evergreen. Yeah, I went okay. to Evergreen for a while. Yeah. But you started cashing in on this yeah. SEO. Was this when banners were big? Uh, I got some buddies who <laughs> made yeah. a lot of money. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, I I think I'm just uh, uh, I don't do well in academia. I think yeah. I think I'm a I'm an entrepreneur at heart. Yeah. yeah, and. Uh, and so um, I started working. At first, I mean, my my you can't stand like working for somebody else. I mean, you know, you're that. was that well, it? Just... Well, for for me, I, I just loved uh, doing it. I, I like I, I'm not as big on talking about theory. I, I just love getting in there. And and I was fortunate. I worked for a local grocery chain um, that uh, uh, they had four stores, and they gave me. Uh, it was family owned, so they gave me a lot of responsibility. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I became a supervisor very young, a store manager at like 22. And then when I was about 24, I was bouncing around all four stores as an operations manager. But they weren't, it depends on your trainer. Obviously, they weren't micromanaging you. They, they put it on your shoulder, but they kind of gave you the flexibility. I, 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 had, I had a great mentor named Troy Tittles. Mm-hmm. Um, Troy uh, just uh, let me do whatever whatever I wanted to try. That's what you learned. And, um, and uh, handed me a lot of uh, uh tasks and good advice mm-hmm. and so I learned a lot and then from there I did uh, I did financial services mm-hmm. and in financial services um, learned a lot as well uh, I had some uh, great people I was working with uh, Sina Azari and and uh, his group and uh, again just learned a lot from them it was uh, it was a you said Texas fitness so oh that, that, that was a market I'm, yeah. I'm forwarding I'm sorry yeah, that was the, this was the second job after. yeah that was, okay. that, that was the second line in my experience and um, uh, I I think um, so the, you're saying you're saving up at this time well at at, at, at in financial services I would I, I think I got was hardcore sales experience 
Like, you know, the, the ability to not be shy, knock on mm-hmm. someone's door, mm-hmm. you just call the lead, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and they still let you come over, you knock on the door, mm-hmm. and then you sit at the kitchen table mm-hmm. and, and you go ask them to see their finances. Mm-hmm. And it was just a, a really, really uh, a great experience for me I, to, to I learn how to do that. Everybody needs that. Even if you become a doctor, at the end of the day, you still got to sell yourself in some sense. Everybody shrieks, and I did too. I'm like, no, uh, I'm a marketing guy. I'm not a, I'm not a sales guy. But the reality is, we're, you still have to sell to some level, whether it's a big transit. The thing is, if I say cold call, it just, ugh, it, it yeah. me. But what if I said, okay, you got to call these ten people, um, which I, I, I'm a realtor now. And you're just introducing yourself, That's even right. if they're strangers. And believe it or not, I do some of friends. But I, one thing I found about myself was. Um, I would love just talking to the Uber driver when he picks me yeah. up. And then in those 20 minutes, felt like we became yeah. brothers. <laughs> and and, and well, I started to notice it too, but that mental shift. But I think that basis, even though you're doing what you're doing now, uh, when you move on, when you talk to your partners, when you pitch to them, you're still selling. Yeah. Or you're, selling, yeah. you're selling something you believe yeah. in. Yeah. Right. Not, that, not that's financial right. services. That, that's right. right. That's right. And so I think I, I just learned a lot. I learned about the sales process. I learned on um, how to uh, to explain myself well in, in uncomfortable situations, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and then from there, I, I got into online marketing. Mm-hmm. And um, I had a friend uh, named Scott Ruick who uh, had a marketing startup, that, and he convinced me to to quit my job and 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 uh, work with him. He, he was like, you're in a tough business, man. I think he actually said you're in a crappy business. <laughs> uh, I, he said, he told me about the internet. He there's, told me about There's always fear doing. in taking that leap and trusting this guy, though. What made you go, uh, uh, yeah, obviously you had to really hate the kind of service that you said, screw it. I'm, I'm taking the leap. Yeah. That's what everybody's afraid of. They yeah. Want, they want to stay safe. I think I, I think I learned what I could from, from the financial services uh, uh, uh trip that I, I was on he and hated it he wanted scott he, yeah. he was willing to hear anything he, scott yeah said. i i did not like no it but obviously scott's pitch was decent enough for you like okay, well this makes sense or else well, you would have never done it. scott i knew from um uh training under frank shamrock i we trained together under frank shamrock trust in like 98 arts. yeah and he, he was, was all Hayward. frank was in hayward right no he was at aka in um on camden and hills in, in san, at san jose yeah in san frank jose was, okay. yeah i remember the phase when he was in the jump soul Commercials where he was actually training in those. Uh, yeah. It was a basketball thing. Uh, but yeah, so, so so we met um, training martial arts together, and then Scott uh, um, told me, he, you know, hey, I'm I'm raising some money for this marketing startup, and he told me all about it. it sounded really exciting, mm-hmm. and I trusted him. He was a good friend of mine, so I, I jumped in there, and that just kind of uh, blew my mind. Like, uh, so what Scott did with the the money that he raised was he. Um, acquired a bunch of smaller startups Mm -hmm. that um, had these really, really talented, motivated entrepreneurs that that founded them. Mm -hmm. So um, I remember the first day uh, uh, sitting around a table and, you know, it was a a couple of groups of people where um, Scott had just bought their company and acquired them. them. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was just, I learned so much from these guys. Mm -hmm. I I learned, I learned, uh, uh, you know, PPC and media buying and email marketing and affiliate marketing, but I also learned how to be an entrepreneur. I love that. And the fact that he bought them all out, it's weird because it's the startup mentality, Mm. right? And a lot of times uh, you would think, okay, well, he bought them out, you know, well, they're gone now, they're going to vanish. But instead, they know, hey, this is the guy that bought us out. And they think of it as, okay, there's no there's no we're all one mm-hmm. right we're all mm-hmm. one and now that because you know startup people there's looking for fun, they're their visa they're looking for funding yeah, look right. at all the startups out there's some kid that comes up to me and says he needs money mm-hmm. for a startup as soon as he has he's like okay now i got what i want to get mm-hmm. i'm still here yeah, how he, can i do this how can we grow to get he did something really interesting and he, he had to be a good leader he, to, to he, do that. he knew all these people already okay and so he raised this money and he looked for the most talented people he knew and he tried to cut them in on and so, um, it, it, but they were doing the same thing kind of, so the vision yeah, was the it, it was like, they all had their specialties in online marketing got it, got and, it. and he acquired their company. So they would work with that, got it. The, uh, his company, the PPC, pay-per-click you're saying, yeah, yeah. Email marketing, affiliate marketing, display marketing, uh, um, affiliate marketing okay. this kind of thing. Um, so I learned a lot from that group and a group of, uh, of those guys and I ended up, uh, breaking off and, and, uh, trying a couple startups together. Mm-hmm. And, um, 
and that that's what led to smash that's we were doing the the, the texas marketing awesome. and, and for those of you let's say there's a kid out there who has no idea what the hell affiliate marketing is uh google it uh, asshole I, I shouldn't be telling you but i i didn't come across it till i'm seeing more and more youtube ads of these dudes talking about it. i know you've seen that too but essentially to, to, oh you haven't mm -hmm. um but just basically you know websites will pay you um for example Correct me if I'm wrong. Like you can go to Walmart's website, go through a section, you'll find an affiliate uh, marketing. They'll have certain things that they'll have you to do, and then they'll pay you a check. Yeah, basically, it pay you for for uh, referral sales. Okay, it, 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 and and so um, I'm sure he has one intricate web of his blueprint on how that works. Yeah, so um, uh, yeah, th that's basically what affiliate marketing is. It's okay. it's a, you, you give a, maybe a a unique link to someone with with um, any cells that go through that link or that coupon code or something and then you get commissions off of those cells and timing is everything in life that might may not be as big now but at that time it was just fresh right oh it was that, huge back then way, way uh, early yeah. your timing was perfect so yeah. uh, obviously what you're saying is you made a little chunk of money that's what made you make, make you smash uh, yeah I, i'm just I, guessing no i i mean i i was just i, I was lucky to be uh to be um introduced to these really really smart talented people and then i had some time um you know to to figure out what i wanted to do i, I was fortunate i had support from my family and and my wife debbie and um and the martial arts is always yeah, there yeah. it's crazy that you're saying all these things and at the end of the day it's weird how much um oh i met him through uh, football. I met him through whatever. So we almost don't care about the subject of internet mm -hmm. marketing or whatever. But do people know, like, and trust you? Mm -hmm. And that's never a question because uh, he's my guy with Frank Shamrock that mm -hmm. uh, I went to eventually. Mm -hmm. and he's thinking, okay, well, this is my guy. I can trust him. Because yeah. I met him somewhere outside uh, uh, of that. And I just, yeah, that, I just want to say that that humans are kind of crazy in that way. That, right? yeah. that personal history. When it, uh, that's our anthropology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That we saw. Yeah. Humans are. <laughs> that's totally true. <laughs> And I, I think it's um, like, I think people always say like, don't do business with friends. I totally disagree with that. Mm -hmm. I, I want to do business with, because I get, when I'm working on something, that's all I do. And I spend so much time, time doing it. I want to spend time with people I like. And if you have a personal history with them, the trust is there. Um, I, I, you don't want to let each other down. And for me, I, I like that, to, I'm glad I like you to brought, work with brought that up. When you see anyone who's big or anyone who's out there, nobody's done it without partners oh that's right and Absolutely. and of course again indian father and tell you, i love my dad he has a hundred things i'll never fill his shoes that he's done better than me the one thing and there's always gonna be things we disagree with was his thing would always be uh, i will help anyone as much as they want me to help, help uh, them but roman I, I don't do partnerships mm -hmm. now i don't know if that's uh, some type of secret uh trust issues he's had in the past mm -hmm. and people have that type of stuff but in my mind, I completely agree with you. I think somebody is more diplomatic that you're only going to get so far. I keep thinking back. It was your quote or uh, Rudy Oates. I think it was you. Um, but uh, he, he said something along the lines that if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go uh, far, go together. Yeah, so that's I pay a, attention. Yeah, that's a, that's a great <laughs> quote. I, it's definitely not uh, said that. mine or Rudy's. I think it's – I've tried to look up that quote because yeah. I like it so much. Yeah. And I, uh, the, 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 I think most um, legitimate source says it's an African problem. And, and, you, and you know what that means is that even if it was the person, somebody else, they heard it from another person. Right, right, right. right yeah. Um, yeah. When, it's, we, it's when, we, when we talk, uh, we're just repeating what other people have told us. That's right. right. That's when right. we listen, we might learn something. Yes, Dalai Lama. I'm getting too deep. <laughs> you're, the, you're the quote guy. But it's absolutely true, yeah. right? Uh, but... Uh, let's uh, let, let's keep it moving. So, so then we opened our third location. We we, we, we opened the third location in Milpitas. Milpitas, so sweet. yeah. That was I was happy for you guys. Like, yeah, that was the you know what I mean. Yeah, because the, the combination of square footage, everything you guys envisioned. Because you can't always have a perfect. And, and when you go from zero to one, you just learn so many lessons. And from when you go from one to two, you learn a lot a lot of lessons. But I I, I agree with you when. I felt like we were able to go from two to three. Um, it, it's like we, we knew we could continue to replicate this. Right. And we could continue to bring in uh, talented people and, and do it. So uh, what happened there was uh, I was looking in the Milpitas location uh, with, with a partner of mine, um, uh, Lou Noble. Lou is a, a longtime friend and I've uh, been active in the martial arts uh, 
yeah. uh, space for a long time. And he teaches uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu as well, I believe. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, a long-time training partner. And so, Lou and uh, Jake Tannenbaum, who's a, a friend of Philippe Novotkov, they went to Cal Poly together and they wrestled. Uh, awesome. Jake's a great guy. He worked for Apple at the time. And, um, and so, uh, we were looking for a location in Milpitas. And then uh, the owner of GFY Gear, mm. his name's Mark Mark, Mark well. Maison. Yeah, he, he's gonna be on the scene. Yeah. Mark Maison's the, uh, the man. And he was totally cool with it. Oh, I'm sure he's gonna be cool with my face of glass. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. No, he's Mark, so, he, so at, at noon where I was supposed to be uh, today, I mm. missed about three months of working out, but uh, he still comes in at noon and sometimes he, you, you know, this even teaching James' uh, class or he's hopping in and teaching his own, but. So you met him. Mark, Mark is a. Did he I, connect you? With? Yeah, he connected me with Rudy Ott, okay, but, but Mark Maison is a, a amazing guy. He's like a one of the the best kept secrets I think in local martial arts community. Humble as hell. Too. Yeah, he's just he's donated and supported mm -hmm. so many local gyms and local fighters that and he, he, doesn't, he doesn't give a shit about the credit. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's a, he's an amazing guy. So uh, Mark introduced uh, Rudy Ott and I because we were going into Malpitas, and he said. Hey man, I, I think you guys will will get get along really well. You should talk. Rudy and I had actually met twenty years prior, mm. um, just through the local community, but hadn't talked in a, a, a long time. Mm. And so Rudy and I sat down and uh, and hit it off right away. Mm. Uh, we we had a, uh, a, a kind of the same vision for what we can do together, mm. and uh, and we were able to link up and then. Um, and so he was super involved in opening the Melpitas location with Jake and uh, and uh, Lou Noble, mm -hmm. and uh, and and then and that's the gatekeeper. That's all you need with, with, with if you want to get things done. Essentially, he's gonna he probably worked his tail off, ground up. Oh, so he's gonna he's gonna Rudy Ott is a workhorse. Exactly, exactly. He is a workhorse. So he's there all the time. Right. He's super super. Uh, Experience well, he's, and he's kickbox kick martial arts at heart. That's yeah. the thing, right? Opening right. up the gym, to the gym yeah, so yeah. So, so you then, guys cross paths for a reason. I mean, that's the bottom line. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. So, then, um, there's this uh, uh, other partner that came in. His name's Tony Gabuka, mm -hmm. and Tony ran a uh, 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 he runs dentistries. Uh, uh, there's actually one by Smash San Jose and then one in Milpitas, I think. So, Gabuka Dentistries, his family, uh, Runs them, but he had a small gym called uh, Milpitas Boxing. Okay. And Milpitas Boxing. Wow. I see his face there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and Milpitas Boxing ended up joining us as well there. Awesome. And so, oh, uh, so they moved over. Yeah. But, but what you're looking for is great trainers. Great. Yeah. yeah that's what you guys have yeah. about anything. Uh, yeah. I think I said that outside too. I was like, you can have the best location, you can have the best whatever. When you walk in there, it's uh, that. It's record. about the team. When it's Rex Quando. Uh, right, where you put in uh, guys like uh, Palomino, and people will drive out hours yeah, uh, to go see him. And iron sharpens iron, right? Yeah. I, 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 and That's being right. around each other um, is you don't have to worry about. We the, we egos, all the little hold a. Uh, uh, let's talk about that stuff. Is true. Yeah, we all hold each other to a really high standard. Yeah. We all and and so whether that's um, in teaching classes. Mm -hmm. For our members or or just doing what we say we're going to do so we hold each other to that so that that was how mopitas uh uh got created we put together this when team. martial arts meets business that's what my that's my right yeah well it's it's also um it's a huge picture of rudy's face uh, oh, no sure. thank you uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, come here. so it's it's also not just the martial arts um that uh and we we're you, you and i met through the martial arts and that, that's what your focus is on but we have these really, really high level fitness instructors. And so what we noticed was um, that we combined the networks of our kickboxers mm -hmm. and our jujitsu guys mm -hmm. and the people that had like a CrossFit background and fitness pro background, kettlebell, boot camps. And so- um, uh, I see it now, there's, and there's a huge insane value to that. People will literally pay for advice from them. I was giving him a lot of uh, shit because of the debate stuff about these, uh, these secret groups, uh, but, He's slowly winning me over where, you know, I, I don't see the huge vision of it, but he's doing, doing intermittent marketing way before me. But I, I don't mean to cut you off, but now I see not only are you building a sense of community, but when you're in there, you guys might be chatting back and forth and somebody throws in something when nutrition comes up, but you have 10 to 12 experts talking, right, right. even though it's a general, because there's a lot of experts out there, this mm -hmm. and that, mm -hmm. but when Philip tells me something of this is what worked for me, you listen. you're not going to find that on yeah. Google, yeah. right? Yeah. And somebody who's tried and tuned and tested. So I far more respect when I'm talking to one of my basketball 
teammates uh, or somebody I respect knowledge wise, which is probably why people love the background scenes of, of, of the, the UFC and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But when you're surrounded by champions like that, you're literally, when you're, you have a membership with Smash, you're getting that um, on a daily basis, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Within that. Aside from the funny gifts and the jokes and the bullshit, that's, yeah. that's important. Um, and I was telling him, he maybe you didn't even notice, I'm like, you sparked a few relationships already in the uh, Oh, we've had Smash. marriages. We that's that's crazy, yeah, crazy. Yeah, crazy. Like, it's, and, and that's yeah. where it comes to uh, like minded. Yeah. That's the reason they cross paths. That's the reason they showed up together. So um, it's a beautiful. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. We're we're super proud, and um, it's it's all. Do, uh, we've had so much support from these local expert instructors who who just have this really deep network in whatever their art and discipline is. Right. And so when you combine all that, it's just incredibly powerful. Um, uh, that coupled with the community support of the members mm-hmm. and, and the instructors has uh, really built Smash. That's awesome. Man. We're almost all, um, almost all of our members, more than half of our members come from referrals. And that, that means that... There's something uh, better than referrals. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah. That's right. That means that people believe in it. They're having just a great experience. And, and they so had a great trusted friends. source that, that they know, like, and trust that have brought them there. So there's not a single doubt in their mind, right? That's, that's right. That, uh, that it's not going to be good. Uh, I told you time's going to fly. We're going on 45 minutes uh, right now, and Debbie's going to kill me. So uh, I want to make sure I, I get anything else in, but I could talk about this uh, all day. Um, I'm almost uh, uh, jealous because I, I think the key, all the books we read, all the bull crap is you go to your 9 to 5, you do whatever. Okay, but what do you do uh, in your free time that doesn't feel like work or, or whatever? Whatever that is. From everything I've read, you can turn that mm. into some source of monetization. It may not appear to you because mm. you're like, well, I like playing video games. Mm. There's there's millions of dollars in 2017 of kids playing video games this day, right? Yeah, so I don't, I don't care if knitting yarn is your thing. Nobody wants to take the leap, but there's a way to – it's probably not the greatest business idea, but, but you get what I'm saying because I, I, I totally it, get what it burns saying. a fire in yeah. your belly – where you work extra hours and you work, never did I imagine with this, you know, even if I'm, if I'm working for the technology company I was at, I'm working for, for Subway, it's one thing, but I knew that, I don't know why, I can't stop watching mar- martial arts and, and eventually uh, that and, and real estate, I love it, but you found a way, or it found you really to, right. uh, to make that your passion and that's, that's really a, a beautiful thing. The Smash Malpitas, you got your one-year anniversary. Is only members invited to that? No, everybody's invited. invited. So if you're watching this, you you, you send this out to uh, thousands of people, that uh, this is your invite Mm -hmm. from uh, the man himself. Check it out, and I'll throw that date in there. Let me make sure while we have your your time, because I know you're you're never going to let me do this again, uh, of uh, of what else um, should I ask? So uh, I said, what sparked the love for... uh, the BJJ, obviously, and Michael uh, pulled you into his garage. You mentioned that uh, earlier. Um, what are your thoughts on, uh, well, before we get into daycare, uh, explain uh, the concept uh, of social uh, fitness. I think that's pretty innovative. Yeah. Well, what, what, what can people get with that as far as value? Like- yeah, so um, the, the social fitness network is uh, something we created in October. It's a, it's a totally separate company than Smash. And, uh, and myself and a lot of other uh, gym owners mm-hmm. who who wanted to kind of keep their brand but give as much value to their members as possible. Interesting. So so we, we teamed up, a bunch of local gyms teamed up to service each other's members. So if you sign up at one, you can actually go to all the, the gyms in the network. And right. this is just that a, way they don't lose their they're not being taken over by somebody, but it's another stream of income. Yeah. So for them. so it was a just a Powerful. great great experience where okay. I sat down uh, yeah, I was the have someone that came really? up with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's pretty cool. So, so um, I, I created the company and I started reaching out to paper click, to paper click thinking, <laughs> uh, connected to, to uh, local gym owners. And and I what I realized is there's kind of a unified realization of, of local small businesses that we are not our each other's biggest problem. It's the gym. I always say the gym down the street mm-hmm. is not your problem. Your problems are internal or, or great. It's like government regulation. And anybody who thinks like that is not going to last. Or, or loser, loser mentality. That's right. Big box gyms, uh, virtual competitors, this kind of thing. And, and government. Right? Yeah, yeah. Government that's, regulation. That's why he was so hesitant to go with me. He's like, didn't you just send me the podcast? No, he didn't say that. I just made all that up. But, uh, but yes, that's 
We can only control what we can control, right? Yeah, That's so insane. so all the other gym owners um, that join realize this. Yeah. And we realize that we're stronger together. And, and I'm sure some said no, and that's okay. Uh, very few, very few, very few that we sat in front and of. They're not actually gonna be around too long. Sorry, passing. Actually, my opinion. Actually, um, didn't get it or were afraid of it. Right. But most of us just said, you know, let's try it, mm-hmm. and, and it's going really well. Uh, it, our, our members, instead of having one location, have thirty Bay Area gyms mm-hmm. to go to, and um, that's a great thing for you to say. You know, why, why don't you try it? If you don't like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but you get stronger with numbers. Absolutely. Okay. I'm and not so, gonna, so I'm not going to force them to be transparent and say, "I know what's in it for them." Yeah. But what's in it for? Well, it's it, what, what what I really did was um try to. Create, if you don't feel comfortable, well, you don't talk about that. Well, no, I mean it, it's it's mostly for so when for for the for the gyms, you know, we okay. uh, and and it's members, right? Mm-hmm. So the idea was how do we bring as much value as we can to our members mm-hmm. and support the local small business. I've become very passionate right. about helping small well, businesses. I, I saw it. I didn't understand it. I love that. Um, I don't know if you changed the, the price point at all, but just to start off, the price point was so low that I never got a chance. I knew eventually I was going to talk to you uh, and ask you about it. Mm-hmm. But the stronger your members and power gets, the more it's going to dictate you having that ability right, right. to uh, br- uh, bring in that price point. For anybody who's listening, uh, unless you don't feel good, what, what, what is it at now? So you pay X amount, you can go to any gym. We're talking, you go to Hayward, right. you're here, you're right. there to right. train, yeah. right? Is it? Yeah. Uh, so so the, the idea is that um, if you go to the website, it's 159 mm, and okay. uh, you choose a home gym okay. and, and, and you, you basically can access. That's what I was going to ask you next. So yeah. you cover the home, home gym, which you got to pay anyways, uh, but... Uh, you pay for him on the home gym, and that gives you access to everything. Yeah, it gives you access to everything. And so that, that gym is in the social fitness center. Yeah, if they're and in that the gives way. other people an incentive. Like uh, gym owners call you, say, "I want to be a part of the social fitness." Center. Yeah, yeah. So it's going really well. And the idea here awesome. again is to uh, help connect some of these fitness communities. What myself and other gym owners realized was that uh, our members actually all know each other. Um, and they, they will train together at open mats and this kind of you know, stuff. You know what happens? People, when they're going to check out on the martial arts team, they're going to start asking eventually, hey, are you guys in the social fitness n- network? Yeah. What the hell is the social? Yeah. No, it's this thing where you bought, and those owners are literally going to, yeah. you know, eventually as it grows, be calling you up and say, how do I? So, so, so I was a beautiful organic. I was or- overwhelmed by the local support of mm-hmm. gym owners. Yeah. A lot of really, really great gym owners um, just, uh, 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 love the vision already had been thinking about similar things like how do I partner with more gyms in the area and we just kind of well they uh, got to be die hard entrepreneurs who had to do all this Absolutely. crap on their own and you combine you throw in the mentality of a martial artist it's uh, it's, it's making me jealous I gotta open up a gym it's a, it's a beautiful thing I, I mean it makes life for you because I'm sure you've looked, you've seen nightmares of owners if the, let's say the product was different mm. uh, the ego was right let's say the gas station or whatever but you combine that with martial arts and then brains. And I knew talking to Mark uh, too after 15 minutes that, okay, this is what he loves, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But he's also savvy. Right, right. Um, and, and that all came from his, from his tech sales, yeah. the way you had to go through everything right, right. you had to go through. So that's, that's really cool uh, uh, to me. So if before Michael Jagged you in, did you are, uh, already have an interest? In oh, yeah. Martial? So I, I was training uh, martial arts since a kid, right. since I was a, a, a child. And... Um, and uh, when I was 19, I started training with uh, Frank Shamrock. Yep. He was teaching a class at American Kickboxing Academy. That's where you met Scott. Yeah, yeah and that's where I met Scott. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so that was the first real training. I, I uh, so Frank's name brought you there. You're like, oh, yes, I, I was a huge UFC oh, fan he was at the time. time. He was the man. Yeah, yeah. He was out there with yeah. Boss doing pancreas yeah. and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, that, that's right. Um, that's right. So so I met him, and then um, from that relationship, like. It just, uh, I met a lot of people there. Um, well, during Michael that time. walked in there, it was a separate Well, Michael actually did uh, uh, teach there at um, one That's time, cool. but I met a lot of people in the community. Oh, one one big there. group that really helped Smash San Jose that I want to mention is uh, Jane Estioko and Kung Lee. Mm-hmm. So um, a- about six months after we opened Smash San Jose, uh, uh, I started talking with Jane and Kung, who I had met because I had trained with Frank years before and uh uh we we were able to merge our groups together and and um and that helped smash san jose a ton so their support at smash san jose combined with jacob palomino and phil and mario and 
everyone else that, that I could name a million people that contributed uh, just keeps leading to better and better things. That led to Milpitas, which I had a ton of support from all, all the partners there. And so, um, so yeah, it's, you never know how these things, I never knew going to Frank's class because I was a UFC fan was going to lead. I never thought I'd own a exactly. gym. Yeah. I was just a hobbyist. Don't stay, you know, home. I, I just, stay home, man. Show up. Yeah. You never know what the hell's going to happen. Yeah, I was just a hobbyist. And right. I, I, I love training martial arts, but I, right. I'm, I'm not a competitor or a fighter or anything like that. I just I just love training martial arts. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Somebody told me, this got me fired up. Um, Jeans, I think uh, Dazzle teaches the kickboxing class. Yeah, it, yeah. And Jane's brother Ron. It's so family. Yeah, well, it's, technically you're not family, but it's family. Yeah, yeah it's, and, and it's awesome. So uh, uh, they moved in, and Jane works for uh, Bellator now. Yep, she the, does. A, a local I, organization. I probably, probably DM'd her once or twice. And yeah. I was like, yeah. Sorry, Jane. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I was like, hey. Uh, so uh, let me be the head of marketing. <laughs> yeah. How do we do that? Yeah. Uh, yeah she's, she, Jane is uh, uh, really a special person in, in the local martial arts she's community. Very, very savvy she, she was a marketing. She was a fighter she and, was, okay. and then a gym owner. That makes sense. Okay. For a long time. And she her ran dad, around the kind gyms. Did your dad uh, com- compete as well? Was he a fighter? Uh, uh, her? Uh, her? Uh, Wait, I, I, I'm getting confused. It, I think it's her brother. It's her brother. Okay, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Her brother teaches uh, the really young kids kickboxing. Yeah, and, and then he teaches classes. twice a week. And, uh, but he does, he's in charge of all the testing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, right. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's one of my favorite teachers. Yeah. He's awesome. He and then, me through hell. And now she works for a locally owned organization, Bellator. You yep. know, it's a, uh, Scott Coker. Yeah, yeah. A great promotion. Uh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, James is uh, at Bellator. Sam's fought James Bellator. Terry. Yeah. Um, we had so many. Yeah. It's crazy to see so that's many right. um, local guys, right, come yeah. into that. But yeah, yeah. Kung, Kung is amazing too. You can't say San Jose without Kung. Obviously, he's the heart of the, oh, he, the community. He, he's, he's, a, he's done every. He's the, he's the pioneer. Period. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Which is insane. There's just so many guys trying to trying to fight like Kung Lee fights. Right. Yeah. He's just he's just an amazing athlete and. Um, and did I remember going to his, his, his Milpitas uh, training center. Sam had me come uh, a few times. I was only 18, 19, but I tore my knee up the first school I went to, and I was in this middle period. Mm. And it's uh, crazy, but uh, some of the best workouts that I got while healing was I never did so much goddamn ab work in my <laughs> life. There was people walking around having yeah. to jump over sticks, and the gentleman who's at uh, Milpitas now, I always forget his name. He's the uh, besides Rudy's kickboxing, uh, Jose uh, Palacios. Jose Palacios. Oh, Jose is amazing. I would mention yeah. him too He's because so when right. Kong was teaching, he would, I would attend all of his classes. That's crazy because this is 2006. God, I'm old. Jose teaches both at the Sunnyvale location and Milpitas location. Are you doing he, 6 a.m. in the morning? He, yeah, he, that would be. If I was near Sunnyvale, I'd be 6 a.m. That's my we yeah. Jose. Well, he, 6 a.m. in Milpitas, and okay. then he teaches Tuesday nights and Friday nights in Sunnyvale. Yep. And then I, he teaches a couple other classes. In so Milpitas first time too. I came to Rudy. He's a uh, great Ru- uh, Rudy Oates. I saw him and I, I reminded him and told him. And I think it uh, brightened him up because then you forget about how far you've come when we were in that. It was like a little Mopita Strength and Training Center. It was kind of near where I was trying to tell you guys about uh, where, were you, where Eli was looking hard around Mopita's, right? right? But that's so cool uh, uh, to see how far everything was uh, kind of come, you know? It was so small and I, I just, it was my first day and, and Kong uh, shows up, puts on. Uh, it is uh, his wrestling gear, and he's just like, he's like, you are you gonna wrestle? What the hell? Who's, who's working me out? And I'm like, I'm like, yeah. I was going to the bathroom. Actually, yeah. uh, I'm uh, like 18, 17 yeah. years old, but, but obviously Sam brought me to all that, and he's just been an amazing mentor, amazing coach in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the hardest working guys I know. He still looks like he's 21. Yeah, he's, uh, he's yeah. an amazing, amazing guy. And the reason again that, that we met, um, we could talk about this today. I'm so glad we covered uh, uh, biz- the business aspect of it. Uh, obviously, martial arts is your passion. I think the hardest thing for people is to combine those two because half the time they don't even know what their passion is. A lot of times in front of them, but mm-hmm. they don't realize it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so when you got your uh, black belt, that was under Michael Jen. So oh, Michael, Michael, okay, yeah, Michael Jen was my jujitsu instructor. So he, uh, I got all my belts from Michael. So I trained with Michael guy from uh, he got it from Joe Marrera. Joe Marrera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Careful, yeah. sorry. Yeah, I, I remember it was an M. So yeah, Michael's trained with a lot of different instructors over, over the years. Actually, but, I think I think he's had um, Shadow come for a seminar a few times uh, or something maybe, like that. Yeah. Probably got the last name wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, I I I, I love martial arts and um, it's just given me so much. You know, it's a, my uh, we opened the first gym with just jujitsu in mind and kept adding classes and we had a kickboxing and then kettlebell. Mm-hmm. 
which became very popular, and then boot camp classes and then strength and conditioning. And uh, so now most of our members, uh, over half of our members do the fitness classes. You know, it's, it's a, uh, it, I think it casts a light in that. That's, that's, that's good. Interesting. Uh, you're a kid in uh, Bakersfield. You saved up uh, a little money. You're about, you want to, you're hungry. You want to open up, you know, from scratch, your, your typical similar smash. You know, you're a wrestling champion in your whole cross mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. What advice, if any, looking back, could you give uh, that kid? Uh, obviously, you're gonna need to sit down with him for about four hours or something. Yeah. But, but if you only had an, an elevator, yeah. an elevator pitch to him, what would you tell him if he approached uh, you? That was a complete curveball. Yeah, I mean, I uh, I think that um, I guess um, obviously not not give up. That's what you really want to do, right? Find a way. Oh yeah, I mean, it's uh, the the perseverance thing is huge, you know. And I guess if you're talking about like a high level. Um, you know, not specifics. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, perseverance mm-hmm. is huge. I mean, uh, from, that, your, from your blueprint, don't be afraid to ask for help. Well, I, I think perseverance, focus, and then um, EQ. Yeah, we were talking emotional about EQ. Yeah. We were talking about emotional God, intelligence uh, earlier, and so I think those three things, if I had to say, you know, um, off the top of my head. Are are what uh, make people successful, um, especially in business. And, and I wanted to. I was going my, 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 my spiel's on Facebook, but I wanted to say, you know, you gotta have heart. And when people hear that, they think I'm the athlete that has heart. Yeah. But I'm not even talking about that. I think in business, you can have all the things in the world, right. but emotional. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the part, not being empathetic. Uh, any personality to everyone. I mean, right? well, f- for maybe your your dad, you, right. talk, you talked about your dad earlier, not wanting partnerships. Maybe he was just talented and right. hardworking enough not to need them. Right. But for me, I would be nowhere without my partnerships, right. and I truly believe that. And that means emotional intelligence. That means that you have to be able to uh, be, be forgiving, mm-hmm. and that means your your team has to be forgiving because mm-hmm. we all make mistakes. I make so many mistakes all day long, you know. 100%. And and so the people around me have been forgiving enough. To, to look past that, and then I remember that when I think they made a mistake. And uh, that's, that's one uh, semi, semi-awkward question, I think. Well, obviously, you got great players, so it makes life easy for you guys to agree on stuff. But when you guys finally got to make uh, any type of crucial decision together, I'm sure you guys all get together behind closed doors and nobody knows about. Um, we'd be lying to say that there's never going to come a time when normal people uh, uh, disagree on certain things. Mm-hmm. Um, how, do you, how do you guys kind of uh, work that out for anybody who has large teams. I, I, I just I talk think, about. It. I think yes, communication is huge. Right. It, it's if you know you have a ch- choice. I, I was telling. That's, that's not always easy, right? Some I, people hate those crucial conversations, right? Uh, it helps I, that you guys know each other. I was telling. Communication is so so important, right? I've heard it called the lifeblood of a team, mm-hmm. right? And so I was telling someone the other day that uh, you have to choose to continue to communicate. If, it, if there's ever, if this person wasn't at Smash Action. When in doubt, yeah. communicate. You have to communicate because as soon as you choose not to communicate, uh, you are choosing separation. And that, that's the beginning of the end. So you, you, you definitely have to communicate. Uh, now, if it's anybody outside the organization, like myself, silence is golden. I wouldn't talk to me. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's better. Yeah. Sometimes some situations better say nothing. But obviously. But you're choosing co- separation. Complete opposite. You're choosing separation. Right, right, right. right. Um, uh, but, just but, know you're choosing separation. So, Separation if you're not communicating, but no, the you, other thing you is to, talk about it. to to to, um, to help with that too is mm. um, you have guiding principles as a company and as a team, mm. right? Mm. And if you have guiding principles, and if there's ever a problem, you go back to your guiding principles, mm. and you could say, "Look, at this does not match with the culture mm. that, that that we're trying to build here," yeah. and and you'll be surprised on how often you can apply those to any problems. Right, right, right. So forget about martial arts realism uh, for people that are talking. Um, your two best friends, if you're a real diehard entrepreneur, my cousins always say should be uh, your CPA and your uh, attorney. Yes, you don't want to ever have to need them constantly, but if they you stay as your best friends, maybe this is just for solo uh, yeah. CEOs. Uh, but I'm thinking about the Bakersfield kid again. He's going to take a, a big-ass loan. Mm. He's got a dream. He's going to do it. But at the same time, that's where his passion's at. He's not going to give up. At the same time, you have to be realistic, too. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have to talk about the, what the number numbers are, but who 
guys with the numbers, obviously you have a tax professional uh, and, and uh, a CPA and so forth, but you guys have to communicate that yeah. as well. Yeah, so there's yeah, a system yeah. to it. So you, you have a, a CPA yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you delegate that. Uh, um, That's what that kid should do. We have so much. Uh, yeah, that, 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 kid, that kid needs to uh, partner with professionals. Yes. Right? And so Know your strengths. Know yeah. what you're not good at. Yeah, and and learn from them. Yep. You know, and and the, the you seek out people that have that are specialists, smarter than you. Yeah. And yeah. hopefully, if you actually pay attention, learn from them, they'll get to where you don't need them. Absolutely, anymore. that's that's, that's totally what you, I think where you're getting. That's totally true. Uh, at when you say learn from them and don't just delegate and then you know not yeah. Yeah. be so dependent. Yeah. Uh, on I think I think it, it, for that kid, especially if he is um, becomes the leader of an organization or uh, or stays by himself. It's it's really important that he uh, gains a a wide variety of skill sets, and uh, and you you'll just you'll come across problems all the time. And uh, if you're just focused on one thing, you better have a good partnership with someone else that, that is good at accounting or something. Yeah, like and to go back to my my dad, it depends on what your outcome is, what your goal is. Mm-hmm. If he gets double digits of franchises and some property, he doesn't need anything else. He can manage that stress himself, cool, but I think it depends on what your outcome. But if you want to scale bigger, if you want to continue to grow, then, of course, you're going to have to delegate. You can't do it without help. That's what I always hear this concept of, of self-made, but some people argue there's no such thing as self-made because somebody, oh, I think that's so somebody, somebody somewhere had to help you. So when I heard that side, I'm not so naive, I immediately stopped saying that's totally uh, that. Um, but, of course, it makes that person feel good, but you're pumping – uh, uh, ego by, by saying that and I love hearing both sides um, of things and I, I think that's uh, uh, that's brilliant there's, there's one other thing that uh, I was really looking forward to saying but I went off the tangent on the other thing um, but no that's uh, th- that's great I, I think that was the main thing you know that I wanted to give you was value and I'm glad we kept bringing up that, that biggest field kid because it's not just about us or, or, I, 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 don't, I hate the pitch and other people do too but I think again when it goes back to uh, Palomino doesn't even uh, know it, but uh, when you give, 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 you give value. That's what he did. And that's exactly what he yeah, did. Yeah. Um, uh, great things uh, happen, and you're going to continue uh, to learn from other people. I think we, we nailed everything. It really only took us like three and a half hours <laughs> of talk, bullcrapping. But, uh, so we got we talked about social fitness. Um, small business in 2017, what have been some challenges? Um, and you got such a good group that – that's the key to avoid the challenges beforehand mm-hmm. to uh, avoid them. Uh, oh, daycare. When you did daycare, you did it obviously for a convenience factor with uh, the parents and stuff like that. Oh, but you're referring to our after school program, right? Right. Yeah, it's, well, it's actually, yeah, not a daycare, but it is an after, after school program. So there's no revenue model in that, to uh, uh, See, martial artists hate, don't give a crap about money, they're so nice. So I just feel like such an a hole. Even yeah. there's no revenue model. In it. Oh, there's but, it. But, but there's both sides to it. You have to. Parents you gotta make. A, you gotta stay open. You gotta make a bottom line. Uh, the parents definitely pay for that after school program, right? Um, uh, but my wife started that, Debbie. So Debbie um, uh, was in investment banking, oh. and um, and did very well. She was uh, awesome. super super um, successful, and then um, but did not like her job and she would hear Wait, me you, so you met her during the financial services yeah she did the financial oh, services. Awesome. yeah yeah so um so i she, cut you off she she, she would always she hear hated me. her job she said <laughs> yeah she hated her job she would always hear me telling uh uh people that hey it's our asian way okay as long as we're making bank yeah <laughs> we're doing something right yeah she but would no. always hear me telling people that the best thing i ever did was quit my job and 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 work for myself and and of and, course, she took a huge pay cut at first, but yeah, but she the came quality on. of life, right? Probably yeah. when she was probably just so happy. Oh yeah, not she, driving. You know what I mean? That, we we, we just uh, we we're we're so lucky that we're able to work together. And um, so she she left investment banking, started the after school program, and was uh, not. She doesn't just do that. She she, she helped build the whole organization. She um she. Uh, you know, she took what she learned from there. Obviously, yeah, right? it, it was like I had this decision to make, right? Like yeah. she was like, "Hey, I want to quit my job." And on one hand, as a husband, I was like, "Man, you make great money. We, we should continue to make that money." Mm-hmm. But on the other hand, as a CEO of Smash, I, I knew I could never afford a, a person of her, of her caliber. Mm-hmm. So for the organization, the good of Smash, 
I knew it would be a great thing to bring her on. Yep. So we made that decision together, and she came on. And I'm just sure it was hard for her because, in general, she probably loved fitness too. That, that yeah, you guys had those things in common. That's so right. um, she probably first she was like, "This is work," yeah. you know. Uh, yeah. But but that's what's crazy is anybody who's sitting there in that cubicle right now, what they don't realize is even if they're miserable, there's something we can take from that because you're still learning an organization. Even that kid flipping a burger at McDonald's, he's probably whatever, but if he wants to own a McDonald's uh, one day, mm. what better training can he have? Mm -hmm. But he's like, what are you talking about? I'm a cashier. No, dude, you're seeing exactly, you're getting a taste of there, the There's art. lessons but, to be learned every but, day. But it's mindset, it goes back to, is it a cold call or are you calling somebody just to introduce yourself? Mm -hmm. If I say, just, you're just trying to introduce yourself, then it's it, all perspective. Yeah, it's, not, it's, it's like, shit, okay, that's not uh, too bad. And, and that's obviously what, uh, Debbie had while she was there that was not time wasted obviously she made a lot of money so it wasn't time wasted but she also saw the blueprint there's so many things she can take for that I think that's why it was important that besides the, the subway world as a kid I went to work for a, a technology company and even though I traveled I was a spokesperson but uh, if I ever do want to scale this is how it's done yeah well, grandpa there uh, this is how it's done you got the accounting department you got etc and all that uh, uh, great stuff um, I think uh, this was uh, amazing. This is uh, valuable to uh, um, to anybody. I think that's uh, uh, how long did the take? Oh, I was so out of it last night. Uh, you're about to be. Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, you know, they say. Trying to give me tough yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, they say if uh, you know your pitch, no matter it, it, how, how intricate it is, if you can't explain it to a five year old, right? Mm -hmm. You can't dumb it down. I think Einstein said that mm -hmm. uh, that it's not. Uh, one thing we talked not fine-tuned enough um if you had to uh explain brazilian jiu-jitsu to tate that's your something does he get correctly mm -hmm. in a few sentences what, what, what would you say it, it teaches you how to control a person that's awesome that's awesome and then one word God, you might said that already. control i don't know control control that's that's one right. word of brazilian it just right. i probably made michael uh I see a shout out to him. He wrote a book and he's got something online. Yeah, Michael. Um, Michael uh, wrote a book, uh, uh, the the science of submission. Okay. Um, and then he created a website from that. Book. Yeah, yeah. He, he's uh, super technical. And what uh, uh, Michael, um, I think, his his uh, the the greatest thing he ever came up with. Mm -hmm. I think, and I I call it the Gen Effect. <laughs> and, and it's when you do any physical activity, if you are misaligned, um, uh, meaning not in proper position, uh, you get weaker. And so he applies a lot of that to jujitsu. And, and we really, really look at um, uh, the position that a, someone's body is in. They're not counter rotated or and, and, and we try to get to those positions in jujitsu so that we're strong. And so um, whenever someone's doing something wrong and they're, they're, you know, not symmetrical, or uh, I'll, I'll say the gen effect, you know. And so um, the, mo the moment I knew he was in Einstein, and again, another huge value you get from being a part uh, of Smash is no one ever thinks of it, but obviously basketball players, are the best thing to way to learn is to, um, uh, you know, record yourself, just like we're doing now. Mm -hmm. This is going to seem like, ah, it was all right conversation. And then I roll it back and I watch it a second time and I go, oh, we, that was a great conversation, mm -hmm. a lot of valuable uh, so, so you're saying it just spills our uh, right now? No, <laughs> uh, no. So, but we never understand things when they're in the picture, we're in right. the frame, right? So we we, we yeah. look back. But uh, tangent: Michael Jen looking at surveillance cameras when he's actually yeah. using those <laughs> and <laughs> had the had the state yeah. of mind. I, see, I notice everything like right? uh, to actually go back to that when somebody does something good. Mm -hmm. um, you didn't have the dad recording then, but you're like, okay, we had the surveillance yeah. camera. Yeah. That just shows, um, you know, how his mentality of. Yeah. Um, of technique, his kids are in. Um, they're gonna be monsters, but yeah, they're yeah. just focusing on judo. I mean, you can't answer that question. I'm sure, Mike, you have a method to your your madness. Yeah, you gotta get but, Mike on. But that. he's probably he does uh, a lot. Of yeah, yeah. Does he? Okay. Yeah, yeah. But I'm sure there's methods of madness out that he wants them to focus focus on that, or they're, they're probably focusing on both, right? That yeah, I mean, they're he's he's um, doing did a great job. With, did he come up with parkour? For the kids, uh, he wanted. They were already doing parkour somewhere else. Okay. And so we brought it into to Smash. Yeah, so and that's one of the the outside the box elements with Smash that you're not gonna find anywhere else. I mean, yeah, that's safe for the kids yeah. who don't want to yeah. jitsu, but you're still keeping them active. And, yeah. and obesity is a huge you know epidemic, especially mm -hmm. here in America. So parkour, that's uh, that's awesome. I love to see that uh, when I see those kids in Sunnyvale uh, hopping around, staying, yeah. staying yeah. active. Um, I think uh, uh, we nailed it, man. Go for more days the next time we're gonna have 
have somebody pay for us. Uh, <laughs> no, can I say one last thing for sure. anybody that's uh, listening? And I'm sure mm-hmm. anybody who is savvy knows this already, but the biggest, I'm a big model nerd, and the great thing about the gym model is, um, for anybody who's listening, it is fixed costs. Uh, what does Netflix, what of all of them uh, do, you know, if you want to get that monthly stream? That's what I love about that for the typical gym owner is you're on a monthly membership. And for the Bakersfield kid again, uh, he knows and the person who gets a loan from knows that he's going to get that initial equipment, whether it's 200000 280000 But because he has a bunch of monthly streams, whether those people uh, show up that day or they're like Roman and they come once every four months, mm. uh, yeah. it, it, you're still going to have that monthly stream. Now, you multiply that. And, and I don't want you to think, well, oh, well that's it. No. That is the gym model that's a beauty to anybody who wants to be a part of this that doesn't understand the fi- financial numbers because when you're a, a bank, and uh, Debbie can correct me if, if I'm wrong, you hate guys so, so you hate guys like me, but you love monthly streams no matter how low. What, what I tell people is um, we're not in the uh, fitness business. Mm-hmm. We're not in the jiu-jitsu business or mm-hmm. kickboxing business. We're in the subscription business. And um, uh, the jiu-jitsu, the kickboxing, the fitness, that's our art. That's not a business. That, that's our, our model is a subscription business. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, so you're absolutely right. Um, if it wasn't for subscriptions, uh, uh, there would be no gyms. Right. We wouldn't be able to survive with, it, with it, just chasing people down and asking for the, the monthly. And, and that's, uh, that's the thing with um, a lot of their gym owners are strict with that. But when people understand the business, they're more empathetic to that. That, okay, if you do bounce and you do leave, that is the reason there's, you know, that $200 fee or whatever else fee. It's not that uh, we're evil and we want to take from you, but that would cover you for at least a year for them for you to pay your yeah, bills. Yeah, typically you're going to get a lower rate in exchange for committing to And you guys are way nicer about it uh, than other people are. But again, yeah, I'm saying this for yeah. the kid in Bakersfield yeah. who may not even know this, right, right. who's going to take a risk for that. But again, that's financial security for him of once he has somebody signed up. Now, that's always going to be a shitty conversation uh, because that person might know why do, do this when they sign this type of things. But what it is, is it's helping you stay alive. And it's just a necessary evil. And mm-hmm. when you get, I guess, more uh, intelligent people understand that, they're not going to mind. Um, it's actually, I, I think, a lot of times good for, for the gym member, too, mm-hmm. because they're committing to it. Mm-hmm. They're here, and they've already decided they want to get in shape. They've already decided they want to get good at kickboxing. They're sitting and, on the couch trying to make a decision like, no, I'm paying for this. Yeah. I, I should go. And instead, yes, exactly. Yeah. So it really helps with retention mm-hmm. and it helps them reach their fitness goals. So instead of every time having to re-decide whether they want to be healthy or mm-hmm. fit, mm-hmm. They, 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 they've already decided it. Mm-hmm. They've made a commitment and then the, it helps them get off the couch. The, as you the, the only reason I brought that up is I literally think uh, that for that reason, from a business perspective, if it's not your passion, that it's actually a better business blueprint um, than you know uh, the restaurant business with all that overhead oh, yeah. and so forth. Uh, when you because once you initially pay uh, that equipment off, and not all owners do that; they'll, they'll they'll use that money to add more equipment, as you should right, right. add more things uh, that it's going to be profitable uh, for you. And I have an uncle in India that has the only five gyms, right? But it, it's helped him because. The, the blueprints, uh, mm. the, the blueprint. So social fitness blew my mind. I was just thinking outside uh, the box. So uh, you can get Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you know, uh, lessons here and there. But when can you get uh, inside this guy's mind like that? And uh, I think that that's it. Really, we we hit everything. I'm not going to talk about bench peril uh, or anybody else. But that was the focus here. Is uh, when uh, when brains and marketing and business meet, uh, martial arts and a passion, beautiful things. Uh, happen and, and like when I started coming to you so uh, truly honored and grateful Rudy Thanks for thank you me. so much um, I really appreciate that and he he's probably declined about 20 so I feel very uh, special I gotta do something for him now so uh, when's the barbecue when's the, uh, when's this the, Saturday so this I'll Saturday at, um, at uh, 10 a.m. there's a uh, there's some kickboxing going on some fitness going on and uh, some jiu-jitsu going on right. and then at 12 o'clock from 12 to 5 is our uh, one year anniversary party at Milpitas mm-hmm. and our seven year uh, annual barbecue. Nice, nice. Yeah. If anybody out there comes across this that's a, a gym owner wants to reach out, uh, Rudy or Eli will throw their information out. There's someone to talk about if they want to hear more about social fitness. I know I got three or four 
uh, Indian buddies out there want a bunch of GNCs. So if you need that, that's the place you want to be if you want to get sponsorship thrown out there and get people uh, thrown in there. I know. I always wonder with that. We want to talk about that brick and mortar. Even GNC is going online. Everybody is, right? Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. always an innovation concern for you, but mm-hmm. you're already ahead of the game with, with, with social fitness. So um, appreciate it again, Rudy. You were awesome, man. Thank you. you were so patient. You put up my madness. Uh, Rudy Sanchez, Smash Gyms, and Milpitas, Sunnyvale, San Jose. Peace.